It's the iPhone 15 Pro Max versus the Google Pixel 8 Pro, purely comparing the 5X optical zoom on the camera for both these devices. Before we start, and it's going to be mostly camera and photo comparison based, I will say this. The image stabilization on the iPhone 15 Pro Max was significantly better than on the Pixel 8 Pro. I found I was able to acquire, I guess target is the wrong way to say it, but I was able to go into the camera app, go to 5X zoom, and then frame in on what I wanted to capture faster and a little bit more stable than I was on the Pixel 8 Pro, which stabilization was a little squirrely when I try to do these fast images and capture something quickly. So if ease of use is on your mind, the iPhone 15 Pro Max, I think has a little bit better optical image stabilization. Okay. Let's go into it. Photos. You can see them up here. It is a, a little bear, a little watermelon looking bear thing that I was capturing at my local Daiso. And I'm pulling them up at the same time myself so we could go over them and compare them together. This one, I was a little back and forth on which one I preferred. I do think that the Pixelate Pro in this instance comes out with the slightly better image. I like the fact that it's a little warmer for whatever reason, because that's certainly not a theme that you're going to see throughout these photos. The iPhone typically on average comes out with the warmer tones. And I guess that the iPhone does here as well, but I just like the way that the colors pop on the pixel image there. But as you can see already, as far as the optics and clarity and stuff like that, it's really going to come down between these two devices to image preference. How do you like your computational photography to look? How is it going to be on screen, kind of the post-processing stuff that happens? So let's go into the next image here. We can see some nice flowers. And this is where I think the iPhone really does a significantly better job here. I just like the image. It pops more. There's more detail in the individual petals itself. It's just a happier looking image than the uh, Pixel 8 Pro image in this particular case. It's not something that it was kind of an overcast day, so it wasn't an issue of sun or light or anything like that, kind of blowing out any of the images. But I just like the detail that the iPhone was able to pick up here as opposed to what was on the Pixel 8 Pro. Then we got a little some holiday decorations here. You can see it, it's for Halloween. This again. How do you, this is, this is where it really shows it. And this is where you could kind of see that stark difference between the post-processing. It's nothing to do with the clarity, nothing to do with the 5X optical itself. Both are really good. I like the fact that n neither one gets noisy at 5X. You wouldn't expect that because it's supposed to be 5X optical. It's supposed to have what, but Samsung, when you go to 10X, and this is not a bash on Samsung, and maybe it's why they're dialing it back to 5X this year. When you go to 10X on Samsung devices, the image gets noisy in a hurry. So stabilization gets tougher, image gets noisy. So I know everyone loves that you know, bigger and badder all the time, but perhaps if they were to pull back like they supposedly are on the S24 Ultra, concentrate on a really good, really good 5X zoom, like are on the iPhone 15 Pro Max and the Pixel 8 Pro, that's something that they can compete with. But look at these two images. If I were to say, I prefer the warmer toned one, but again, that's me. You can see the difference here and how it processes. You got a cooler tone and a sharper, just kind of starker color scheme on the Pixel 8 than you do on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Again, here are the hydrangeas. You can see them. Nice color on that. I like the way that the iPhone handles the hydrangea color a little bit better. I like that it adds something warm to that because it just makes it a little bit more lifelike to me. This may be what was there, again, overcast day, diffused light. This may be what the sensor was seeing, and a lot of people like that. So you know what? Give me the most accurate and detailed representation of what was in front of me, and I'll deal with it in post if I have to. I'll throw it in the Lightroom. I'll throw it into Photoshop. I'll throw it in whatever. So if you're a photographer, if you're somebody who wants to do a lot of this stuff yourself, you want Google to help you, yes, take a clear image, get the best shot but you're gonna handle the highlights, you're gonna handle the color temperature in post, then the Pixel 8 Pro might be the phone that you wanna to go to. But if you're a point and shoot, you're like, you know what? I don't know any of that stuff. I don't, <laughs> I don't even know what an Adobe is. Then you're gonna be looking 
at the iPhone 15 Pro Max, I think, to give you some of that. The little bit of warmth, the little bit of to the filters that you add perhaps after to hide heighten the image a little bit. I think the knob there goes to the iPhone. So then we're going to go down here. We've got that holly bush here. You can see the difference between the two. Again, you know, I like the, uh, believe it or not, I think the Pixel 8 comes out ahead here. I like that image a little bit better. I, I think it was, again, warmer tone on the Pixel 8, which is strange. But I think the Pixel 8 overall gives a nicer representation in that particular case. But this shows it, again, as well, why it's so close between these camera systems. Because even though these photos are taken a second apart, maybe two seconds apart, it's just the way that the camera catches the light or the way that the ha system handles it in any particular scenario, either one of these could come out with the best photo. But on the whole, that's kind of what we're taking. On the whole here, it seems like the iPhone does a slightly better job with the color temperature than the Pixel 8 Pro. Again, and you can see this here. We're indoors here. Not ideal lighting. A lot of lighting. It's Christmas decorations in Lowe's, I think, or Home Depot or something like that. You can see there's a lot to deal with here. But the iPhone comes out with a slightly more natural, true tone image, as opposed to the harsher color temperature of the Pixel 8 Pro. You can see the snowman, kind of a blue color temperature, cooler temperature. You can see it again on the reindeer all the way to the right. To me, I don't really like the way that looks, since it was kind of a yellowish tint to the light anyway. I like the fact that the iPhone go ahead, uh, go, goes ahead and highlights that and kind of brings that out. The iPhone does a better job, I think, interpreting what was meant to be there, and the Pixel 8 Pro does a better job interpreting what was there, I think is really the two. And that may sound convoluted, but really, to me, that's what it seems like. Then we're going to get, I don't know which, uh, which of the reindeer this particular one is. Again, you can see it's a little harsher on the Pixel 8 Pro on the right side of the screen here, where it's very, a little calmer and natural with the iPhone 15 Pro Max, all at 5X. So I, I love the images. I love both images. I love the clarity of them. Again, going to come down with a preference. Which way do you like your photos to look? And if you're somebody that doesn't care and you want to do that again yourself, then the Pixel 8 Pro probably gives you a better base image to use. It gives you more of that raw raw image to use and go ahead and check. Now, you, these all have different modes. You could go into the Pixel, uh, the, the iPhone 15 Pro Max, put it in raw mode, all these other things that you could do to then allow you to edit later on. But I like to just go in and pit, point and shoot because when you're talking specifically iPhone, and even more now like Pixel 8 Pro, people buy it specifically for the camera. There's going to be a ton of people that don't really care about all the image processes, stuff, the image HDR, turn off, live, all that stuff. They're going to buy it. They're never going to change the camera setting the rest of their life. The, the way that the phone is, that's what they're going to do. They're going to open it up and they're going to shoot. And this is the result that you're going to get. And then we've got this guy here, the little polar bear. It's a little tougher. It was tougher on the Pixel 8 Pro because the lighting scheme there was a little different. More of the little polar baby polar bear was lit up. But again, that's going to come down to preference. I think the Pixel 8 Pro probably actually in this image comes out a touch ahead. And then the last one I have is this reindeer again. And you could see different lighting conditions. I like the fact that the Pixel 8 Pro does pull out that uh, kind of warmth of the lights that are in there. I do think it's a good image. Both are really good. You know, that this one was tough. This one's a tie. I don't really know who to, who to give this to. I think the iPhone does a good job based on the differences in lighting. And I think the Pixel 8 Pro does a good job of kind of isolating what's there. So those are the, those are the images. You know, that's what I see. Just point and shoot. Go ahead, take it out of my pocket and use it. So let me know what your favorites are down below. Again, the image stabilization, I think, is better on iPhone. It was easier. It was a little less squirrely than it was on the Pixel 8 Pro. But it's going to come down to, and like it always does with these high-end cameras, when you get to these $1,000, $1,200 devices, on how you want your images to look. Because they both have different philosophies on how the computational photography works. So it's really going to come down to, do you like the warmer images and the kind of true tone images that the iPhone gives you? Or do you like that kind of harsh reality of the Pixel 8 Pro. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have a steve day.